Hi everyone, this is your Chess Puzzler and a very warm welcome to the channel. For those who didn't know, I'm covering the Top Chess Engine Championship Games, the Tata Steel Chess Games, and I want to go back to cover one of the Alpha Zero games against Stockfish. I have promised to do so, and here I am. There has been plenty of discussion about these games ever since they were played back in December last year. And though everyone knows Alpha Zero played 100 games against Stockfish, we know very little about this artificial intelligence program. We know it works on an entirely different platform in that it has excelled in playing other games too, even though the program was not designed for gaming purposes. It just suddenly came out of nowhere and disappeared as easily as it came. In the chess world, we know it played 100 games against Stockfish, but only 10 games came to light and there have been plenty of people who want to see more. Why? Well, for starters, there are plenty of rumours about the authenticity of these games. Using an entirely different platform, Alpha Zero is unlike anything we have seen before. Do we care? I guess no, but the end result is what counts. Now, for everyone out there who's not aware, when Alpha Zero played against Stockfish, the time limits were set to one minute per move. The conventional chess engine will do its thing, but it's hardly going to be able to roll out the best move, given the time or the lack of it to be able to work out what it needs to do. We are all waiting to see far more than what we have seen already, but I'm not sure we are going to see anything on Alpha Zero anytime soon or any other games other than the 10 they had decided to make available. Okay, though many have too many doubts about how good Alpha Zero is, I'm going to concentrate on Stockfish. I'm going to see Stockfish is going to use the same moves as it did in his games against Alpha Zero, because if you observe certain moves in certain games, I found it very unlikely Stockfish would ever go for the moves it did when it played against Alpha Zero. This is game 99 of 100 and one of the 10 games that was made available to the public. Alpha Zero White opened up with the Reti and opening the program went for in an earlier game. After Knight of 6, Alpha Zero now opts for D4. After E6, C4 and now B6. When g3 kicked in, we're looking at some type of a Queen's Indian type of game. Stockfish here went for the diagonal and now through bishop g2. Bishop e7 was aimed for a kingside castle. Alpha zero castled and Stockfish did the same. d5 led to the trade off and Alpha zero went for this very clever move. He got the knights out of f3 just to avoid the exchange on d5, because we know what happens if d takes. Stockfish wants to take c4, but the engine needed c6 first, so did just this. The move fell short to the taking on d5. Taking d5 is on, but Stockfish here captured with the knight. I double check this move with the actual engine, and after a few attempts, I increased the time to 2 minutes per move because Stockfish refused to take with the knight. So here we have the first type of problem when we try to check how d5 is recaptured. Because Stockfish simply refuses to take with the knight. In this game Stockfish did take with the knight. Is there a huge difference in how you capture here? No, and since this can be a setup thing, we can ignore it. Stockfish could have captured to expose the knight on h4 and this could be the only way if the engine did really go for such a move. Alpha Zero moved on by getting the knights out of the way. We know this knight on d5 needs to move out of this square. In this game Stockfish backed off the knight to c7. But when I tested this position with the actual engine Stockfish chooses to get this knight back to f6. I'm not sure if at this very early stage it matters where you place the knight so far you're moving to either square. So 
Knight c7 it was. e4 followed. d5 is a standard move, so I did not even bother to check it out. After e took, there are two ways to recapture, but always best to use the knight. Having everything well covered, Alpha Zero developed the knight and increased the pressure on d5. By now, I had increased Stockfish's time to 5 minutes per move just to account for any hardware differences. Stockfish here would go for a bishop move to f6, but in this game, the knight simply removed the knight on c3. Stockfish himself went for this bishop move to f6, or suggested this move, and the question you want to address is why. Well, I hope Alpha Zero's follow up move needs no explaining. And this was what the artificial intelligence went for. And now we could see why this bishop on e7 is better off being on f6. In this game, Stockfish responded with g6. Now, we know this knight on f5 does not need to make a move because of the pin. Alpha Zero has plenty of options available. It can take the knight on c3, it can take the bishop with a check, or even it can come in with a check on h6. The chess terminator came in with a check on h6, forcing the king out, and now it went on to take this knight on c3. Stockfish here attacked the queen through this move. The queen repositioned herself to this square, and immediately Stockfish came in to trade the queens off the board. Alpha Zero declined and move the queen to this spot on a4 and you can see how gradually Stockfish is making something out of this position. After the bishop attacked the queen on c8, pushing it to f4 and after the offer to exchange queens, with the queen ending on a4, it was time to lock the knight in on h6. We know the knight on h6 is covered by this bishop here on c1. But what happens when you isolate this knight on h6? g5 is quite a strong move, and one stockfish went for. With the knight having nowhere to go, what was Alpha Zero up to? In fact, this knight has a way out, but is he able to escape? So why not use g4 to escape? And this might be the answer. After knight g4, once f5 kicks in, whether you go for the attack on the queen, it doesn't really matter, but one thing for sure, this knight on g4 does need to move out. But if we come back, after g5, this knight was not moved, and if the knight is not covered, he will be lost. Any ideas on how alpha zero reacted here? This was some really, really tricky move. Alpha zero said, if the knight is going to fall, only the king can remove him because if the queen is used to pick him up, the rook can now remove the bishop on e7, and if anything, alpha zero is in the driving seat by quite some margin. The queen on h6 is very badly positioned. The knight is basically offside, and the rook in the corner does not fare any better. So the basic idea was to allow this knight to fall, but if this was going to happen, it will be done through the king. But is it okay for the king to remove the knight? Whether okay or not, Stockfish went on and removed the knight, and though the king is not very well positioned, how on earth was Alpha Zero going to make anything out of this board position? Any ideas, anyone? In two one and pause. Using the pin on g5, one idea is that alpha zero can come in with a queen check, but this move is likely to backfire because after the king retreats, not only the queen is under attack, but this plan seems to be going nowhere. Bishop takes, bishop takes, and queen recaptures with a check, is going to get the big lady in to block, and White's attack ends here. Coming back, so rather than going for this queen move to check the king, Alpha Zero went for a much 
more interesting variation. It pushed on with h4 to clear up the file before getting into an attack mode. I think the only playable response here from Stockfish was his f6 and the engine had no problems finding it. After this bishop e3 move, alarm bell started ringing because it is very likely going to prepare this a rook to get active and what a better way to launch an attack on the queen. I am surprised Alpha Zero did not go for another move here and let me return to this position right after f6. Does taking the bishop on e7 work at all? Let's take him and then we can examine. And this is the idea behind this exchange sack. When the queen recaptures, Alpha Zero can still get out this bishop to e3. And now once the king retreats to this square on g7, you can now go on to remove g5. Once g5 is recaptured, only now you can bring in your rook into the picture, which is a far more dangerous move than just taking on b6. In either situation, you only need to look at the position of Stockfish's king, and that is all you need for now. Rook e1 is a tremendous move, and now you can either move out your queen or the king. It is either one of these two moves. King g8 will now get the queen into this square. And now anything goes. From removing b6 to expose the queen to any other move. Of course, Stockfish will have to chase after this queen or even place his rook behind this queen to be able to deal with any discoveries. And this is it with this position because white has one very crushing move. Any takers here in two, one and pause. Bishop d5, check and everything falls apart. Sacking this bishop will allow the queen to move in with a check. And even though you would expect this bishop to step in to take the heat, this very move is going to drop the rook and black is gone. And if we come back, this is why taking the bishop on e7 works fine. So is alpha zero a far superior player against stockfish? Unless I have miscalculated something. No, not really. I think we were here after this f6 move. Alpha zero progressed with this bishop move and now the moment of truth. I have double checked this position with Stockfish using different times for the engine to think about its next move. Let's look at what Stockfish went for and discuss how this move is far inferior to so many other moves. The move Stockfish went for is Bishop to f5. Would you be able to check this out on your own computer? Let me know how Stockfish reacts after this Bishop move to e3. Stockfish, in fact, does not like bishop f5 and never considers it. What if he chooses to go for this king move to g7? So, is this any real proof there is some type of plot here to favour alpha zero? If we go for Stockfish's preferred choice of move, this king to g7 is a far superior one, and this is why rook ad1 was coming anyway. So after this move, now queen e6, after h takes, and now queen back to f7. When this check follows by taking on f6, when the bishop recaptures, the game is looking very equal. Okay, the black king is not ideally positioned, but white has no real threats, credible threats. Coming back, Going for a bishop move to f5 may not look so bad after all. And let's work this one out. After the unavoidable rook a d1, attacking the queen, the queen squeezed into a3, and it was a question as to whether these queens were coming off. It was down to alpha zero to do this. Alpha zero could have come in with a check first by taking g5 but this move was going to come in sooner or later 
Al Fazira avoided the queen exchange at all costs by getting the queen to c4. According to this game, Stockfish went after the queen, but is this a move Stockfish would go for right now? The position is quite complex and you need to be a very advanced player to see what is happening. So why is b5 not a very powerful move? Any takers here? In two, one, and pause. We had gone through a very similar variation earlier, and you can't really forget what happened. The pieces on the king's side are not very much different. The only real difference was with the queen side pieces, but again, the situation is exactly the same as before. This is what went on here. H takes check, F recaptures, and now the threatened queen finds the right moment to squeeze in with a check. Using the pin on G5, and now once the king moved out, the queen has to find a safe harbour. Alpha Zero landed her on h1. And what a spot to place her. Was Stockfish worried about c6? No, not really. And if anything, by removing c6, this is going to help black develop any piece of Stockfish has inactive. Stockfish here went for a king move. So let me return to this move to explain why the king was not moved to g7 in the first place to avoid this situation. Our last move was the attack on the queen through b5. But again, having checked this position more than four times, Stockfish never goes for b5, but gets the king out to g7 right away. So what is the big deal here? The engine probably wants to avoid this bishop move to e4, but this is not a big deal because after the exchange, or even better, let's not go for the exchange but now push on with b5. And only when the queen is forced to d3, can this rook on f8 go for the attack on the queen? I don't think so because of this bishop being able to cover. But this will be moving the game into a very deep and complicated one. Okay, let's return to the game. And this is the last position we left it at. After King G7, the bishop moved in to trade off. Wanted to keep the queen rather inactive on this very awkward square on h1. Stockfish backed off the bishop. But is really the queen remaining inactive on h1 with this bishop back into g6? I didn't think so. After the bishops came off, alpha zero came up with yet another tricky move. Queen h3 with ideas of moving the king and preparing the rook to invade on h1 to launch an attack on the king. After bishop f6, and King G2, Alpha Zero's attack was now 99% confirmed. Stockfish clipped A2. And now once the rook lined up behind the queen, Stockfish got his queen back all the way to stop Alpha Zero from carrying out the attack. With this minority surplus, was Stockfish in any real danger? C4 got the rook out to E8, and now through this bishop move, it was either a choice between taking or going for a rook move to d8. Bishop takes, it was. And now with the recapture, this is a critical moment in the game. Stockfish presumably went for a move not an amateur would ever go for. And this raises so much suspicion about the authenticity, not only of this game, but nearly all 10 games Deep Mind decided to make available. Believe it or not, it seems in every single game Stockfish is blundering a piece and even though this can be possible in some games, you tell me if this rook move to d8, the move Stockfish presumably went for, makes any sense. Having removed the rooks off the board is now a lost game for Stockfish because the queen doesn't even need to invade from the king side. After this queen moved to e6, the knight finally found the opportunity to come out, but after the rook pinned the knight, Stockfish in this position was left with one move. Knight c5, and this was it. 
After the rook removed the queen and the knight removed the other queen, once this rook on a8 fell, the game was as good as over. King f6 led to the exchange on b5. And even here, a7 was secure. Alpha 0 got his king going. A check got the king even deeper into the game. And now with this knight move protecting a7, the rook rushed to attack him. Knight e7 led to rook b8. Knight f5, hoping the rook to take b5. Of course, b5 was never touched to avoid the fork. But after this knight was attacked, this knight maneuver created a counterattack, which led to f3. And now, once the knight hopped onto f7, the same forking idea was on the table. Take b5 and the rook will fall. Rook a8 led to a similar picture as before. After a knight check, the king got closer, and now with this knight moving into c4, the rook finally removed a7. Another check followed, pushing the king to re-attack this knight. Once the knight was moved back, the rook came in with a check, and now having pushed the king back, the rook came into c6. King f7 led to rook c5, and something else was going to disappear before our very eyes. After this king move, g5 disappeared, and now with the attack on the rook, it was again a very tricky position because having a knight on the board is often far more effective than having a rook. Take b5, and that is all she wrote for white because of the nasty forking coming on d6, and that would be very painful. Alpha zero here went for a rook move, but stuck him on c5, just waiting to see how Stockfish would react. After g5 and this king move, Stockfish resigned, and this was another recorded victory for something that remained unbeaten in all 100 games. But is there enough evidence to cast doubt on the result of this game? It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Having one piece from the entire puzzle may mean nothing. But if you add by accumulating all the pieces together, only then you begin to see the bigger picture. This game, in my opinion, led to a win because Stockfish blundered. Was this a real blunder, causing the engine to lose a game, or was it a plot to deceive the general public to believe otherwise? Yes, Stockfish does blunder because I have looked at quite a number of games where the engine does, but to presumably blunder in too many games is not something that is going to go down for many of us. I have checked these so-called blunders time and time again, and on my hardware, Stockfish is doing fine. I know these Alpha Zero Stockfish games generated too much publicity, but I hardly saw anyone who analysed any of these games cast doubt on the validity of the results. I have serious doubts about whether Stockfish was subjected to some unfair situation because the engine would never go for certain moves, as we have seen in this game. For sure, I had looked at some moves the engine would not go for, but this move, and let me come back. A rook move to d8 was the fatal error, whether this move was made by the engine or otherwise. I would encourage comment on this game and other games, so please feel free to comment. I will return to cover other games where Stockfish again seems to have blundered, or so they tell us. But since we have nothing other than 10 games out of 100, are you willing to believe the results where Stockfish, one of our best chess engines, was completely outplayed by something that came out of nowhere. Plenty of more to follow shortly. I hope you enjoyed in the meantime. This was your Chess Puzzler.